Welcome to the Rock Coding YouTube channel. My name is Anton and today we're going to be talking about dependency injection or mainly its bad side. As .NET developers, we design our systems and services for them to go into this dependency injection container and generally everything leans 100% towards this dependency injection container. What I'm going to try to show you in this video is that you can actually lean slightly towards the other way where you're saying I'm not going to use dependency injection and thus that is going to give me some kind of benefits. And hopefully it goes without saying if you just go ahead and lean 100% towards the other direction where you use no dependency injection, you're going to use the benefits that dependency injection brings you. Don't forget, if you're enjoying the video, leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the Discord server or the YouTube comment section. Don't forget to follow me on Twitch and I have a C Sharp course that is out. If you're a beginner, I recommend you check it out. With that, let's go ahead and get started. Here we have the first project where we're using dependency injection. And the example here is a very condensed version of what I encountered during building my course platform. Starting from the bottom, we're going to have some very simple data structure like a course that contains some kind of content and the content will have a name and then perhaps it could be free. We then have a database with some courses. It may belong to one instructor, to another instructor. Some content may not be free. Some content may be free. And this courses is just a list of course, right? It's just a database mockup. We then have a user mockup over here that says if a customer has purchased some courses or if you're just the instructor, you have access to the courses that you have created. A lot of the use cases that are present on my course platform are actually omitted here. Again, this is a very condensed example. Here we have a query that we want to execute on the database for some kind of purpose. And here we have another query. The difference here in two queries is very minimal. In reality, this difference can be expanded and really travels in two completely different directions. We then try to execute the query and apply the perspective of the current user looking at the course. The user can be a guest, the user can be a customer, the user can be an instructor. And even though that you're a customer, you may have purchased different types of the course. And to figure out how much of the whole access you actually have to the course, we need to perform some additional logic. And that logic is really encapsulated in this for loop. So all of the services are registered with the dependency injection container. We inject our views and then we execute them. As developers, when we look at code like this, we say, okay, I can see how this can keep growing depending on all the different various perspectives we may have. What I really want to say is get me the courses and then use something to figure this stuff out. If we would like to do this through the dependency injection container, we would have to try to omit this line of code here. And now we would end up with a factory course view factory, something like this, which is going to be responsible for creating the correct view. So in the constructor, you may accept a nice service provider. We will then need a function to return a, some kind of common query or actually execute it. For the sake of example, let's create an interface. So public interface, I course view. This is going to have this type of signature, semicolon on the end. We'll take I course view, apply it to this view and apply it to this view. Coming back to the factory, we will say that I want my I course view create and create it based on some kind of user. So I will just provide a user ID. This will be public. And then based on the ID, let's use a switch expression. And this is hard coded, but you can think of this as an equivalent of actually checking a claim on the claims principle. If the ID is one, take the service provider, get the required service. We'll take view instructor courses come on here. And then if it is 33, we will take a view customer courses, place this over here. Now our endpoint will actually have to accept a course view factory. So we register another service injected. This is now a factory. We take the factory, we create the view based on the user ID. Well, let's go ahead and supply it over here, place the ID and then pick the user based on the ID. And there we have it. We have eliminated an additional endpoint on our API. This has forced us to create an additional class, which has this switch logic. Now, one thing to note here is the switch logic is pretty simple. Other things that we potentially want to say is, look, 
The logic in this for each loop and in this for each loop is very similar and the difference is really in only one line of code. And this one line of code wouldn't have a negative impact on the other side. Perhaps we would like to consolidate this logic as well. So let's say we will have some kind of perspective. So public class perspective. Inside of the perspective class, we will have a static apply function where based on the user, we're going to try to apply this perspective onto the course, which will just take all of this logic. We'll place this over here. And then for each course that we have over here, we'll take the perspective. We will apply this user's perspective to the course. We can then go ahead and do the same here. And now the two functions are doing exactly the same thing. We can condense this view to view courses rather than view customer courses or view instructor courses, etc. So let's go ahead and actually remove this service. And I want to take a minute to actually state that I'm aware that this is breaking the single responsibility principle that there are two reasons for this to change if an instructor has different use case in how the perspective should be applied compared to an actual customer. Because of the violation of the single responsibility principle, perhaps this method can grow in complexity. Nevertheless, for example purposes, we will say that we have some logic that we've condensed, therefore we've managed to get rid of a service. And now our factory is breaking. However, we don't need this view instructor courses. We just want to view courses. And the only thing that is going to be different is how we're going to be querying the courses, right? So this customer course query. So let's change the interface. This will be an iCourse query. We'll remove the implementation from here. We'll take iCourse query here. We will apply it to the query and uh, the method is actually called execute. So let's execute over here. Come down, take iCourse query, place this over here. And now the question comes around which query we want to execute over here. If I take iCourse query, place it over here and over here. We can register two queries under the same interface, but then only the last one is going to be injected. We can inject an enumerable and then check based on the name. We can create the class at this stage. Hopefully you can see how at this point dependency injection is actually fighting you. What you actually have to do then is you go to the course view factory and you're saying, I will be returning the queries now, depending on the user that I get, I will either get the customer query or query instructor courses. Here, I no longer accept a factory. I actually have to use a view courses. This is still going to be a view. I'm no longer creating it. I'm just executing it. And then inside my view courses, I now have to accept a course view factory. Let's stick the factory right over here. Take the factory create the query based on the user that is currently accessing this queries right over here, take it and execute it. And there we have it. We have managed to clean up the code a little bit and uh, we are essentially applying same reusable logic after we have gone ahead and queried the courses. And hopefully you can see here, we're writing our code in a way where the orchestration of the services is really given to the dependency injection container. You as a developer, you're never really orchestrating services. You're just lining them up in a way where the dependency injection container is going to orchestrate them. I'm here to tell you that you're capable and you can orchestrate these yourselves. So let's take the code that we have written over here. We're going to go to the without solution. We're going to paste everything here and we're going to see what we can actually do and how we can actually orchestrate these services ourselves and what this would look like. So first of all, things like your database, EF core, somebody has already written this library. I'm not going to put effort into removing it from the dependency injection container. Only the stuff that I have written, I'm going to go ahead and just remove it. The factory that I have over here, I don't really care about it. I'm going to just take the switch statement, delete the factory. I will keep the iCourse query over here. And what I will actually do is remove the factory from over here and I'll bring back my query. So view courses now looks like this. Please note, we have managed to get rid of one service. And now the two queries are kind of dangling and the rest is really the same. What is really missing here is this orchestration point where you're saying how these services fit together and no better place for this than your handler. The place between the request from the internet, your business logic 
And right bang on in the middle, you're going to say you're going to declare how this thing happens. You're going to say, I'm going to have my database right over here. And what I'm trying to do is execute a new view courses. Let's expand this a little bit. Inside of here, we're trying to supply a query. For this, I will use this switch statement right over here. If I'm using query instructor courses, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the forbidden new keyword. And I'm gonna do the same with the customer. So new customer, place the DB in here. And this is actually courses. Once all of my services have been set up, I'm just gonna execute view against the user that is trying to view the courses, right? So place the ID over here and that will give me the user. So let's take a look at the two solutions. I'm gonna go all the way down. We have 188 lines of code with the width. If I take a look down over here, we have 203. A lot of the code is shareable, but 20 lines less. The endpoint is slightly bigger. And if we take a look at the width solution, we go to the top. If you've never taken a look at the code and you wanna figure out what is happening, you have to say this, we have this thing called view courses. All right, so I'm going to open it up and I'm going to see what it actually is doing. What is then happening is some kind of thing gets injected into it. It is going to create a query for me. I'm going to execute that query. I'm going to get some kind of result. So if I take a look at how this gets created, uh, there is a switch statement over here and I'm depending on this iService provider. So you can see how I'm jumping around between the classes and in order to fit the whole image into my head, it is a little bit hard and we can actually try to draw this. Here we have the view courses. We will then have the course view factory and the service provider over here. This goes into here. This goes into here. The execution logic is going to go into the course view factory and then from the course view factory into the service provider in order to resolve it and then continue on down here. And also we have the two queries on the side over here, which will be returned from this point and executed somewhere down the line over here. So with dependency injection, this is what you're thinking like. If we go to without, you take a look at this. Here's what you see. I have view courses. I have the two queries due to the if statement. If I'm situation one, this is what it's going to look like. If I'm situation two, this is what it's going to look like. It's either one way or the other. And then you can just say that whatever logic is going to be executed over there is going to be executed with one or the other query. And that is pretty much it. Maybe a little bit biased, but the second explanation was a lot shorter. You can also just see how these services come together. You don't need to jump about things. And then if you actually want to see how they get executed, you go to the individual place and you don't really have to go anywhere else. You already know how the query gets resolved because you've seen it right before entering this service. Now, there will be people that will take a look at this and they will say, Anton, I have a gazillion trillion services. This is not sustainable. You can't do this. And I'm saying it is. It is possible. And for the analogy that we're going to take is we will take a burger analogy. We're going to say that we have four parts to the burger. We have the buns, we have the actual burger, we have the cheese, and finally we have some kind of sauce. Hopefully you can see where this is going. If we zoom in on the sauce and we expand it right over here, we're going to see that indeed inside the sauce, we have a little bit of mayo, we have a little bit of mustard, we have a little bit of whatever. So the idea of the sauce is really compressed into this thing over here, and we can reason about it very easily. The way that you actually get this compression is you take the orchestration that you have produced over here, and you just put it in another very neatly organized class. So let's take the view courses over here. I'm going to say that this is a view courses context for lack of a better name. In the constructor, I will accept a course as DB. So I'm just accepting a database. All of the dependencies can go in the constructor. And again, all I'm trying to do is just move this orchestration over here. We'll return the result from here. For the parameter, we will take int ID. We'll then take the database, place it over here and over here. And then on the individual handler, we new up our view course context. We put the DB in here and then we call view with the ID. I'm going to remove the space over here. And there is a point that you can actually register this orchestration unit with the dependency injection container if you want to. But I would say it is not actually required because what you can actually benefit from is just using a struct. 
And by marking it as a struct, you are removing an object allocation. We can take this class over here. The class over there doesn't really matter, but all of these things will just turn them to structs and they're just going to work. It's not very far off from just using static functions. And what you're really doing with these structs is you're declaring a namespace for where a certain piece of logic happens. And this model of orchestration ends up being very, very declarative and you understand how the services come together to fulfill some kind of use case instead of having to traverse the code and having to figure out what's happening by jumping between services. Now onto the benchmarks, what kind of performance benefit can you actually reap with using structs instead of classes for your services and actually then also orchestrating them yourself. For the two different users, we are registering all of the services for the DI solution and the no DI solution. We're then creating the service provider. And here's the test case for dependency injection. We just get the view course as service. We execute it against a certain user. And then we do a similar thing with the custom solution. We just get our database. We new up the context and then we just execute it against the ID. If we take a look at the code mass that we have, the code mass is pretty much the same. 193 for the DI solution. For the no DI solution, we have 192. The main benefit I think here is really the declarative style of orchestration and then the ability to use structs, which still gives you that class-like namespace definition to say, these are the services that I'm using to execute this function. However, with this solution, we are going to avoid allocations on the heap. So let's open up the terminal, run this and release. The custom solution is ever so slightly faster and the allocations are ever so slightly less as well. But my real opinion is that the performance over here is really the cherry on top. The real thing that I am after and that really makes me happy is this declarative way of saying how your services come together. Please tell me what you think about this approach. Do you agree, disagree? Do you completely hate it? Do you think I'm stupid? Go ahead and leave it in the comment section. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and also man, leave a like if you dislike the video. The dislike button doesn't even work. So might as well just leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. What are you doing? If you would like the source code for this video as well as my other videos, please come support me at Patreon. I will be very happy and a very big and special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. You help me make these videos. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you later.